This isn't exactly the nave of Southwark Cathedral, our traditional home for tonight's ceremony. Once again, circumstances mean that we're coming to you virtually. So from my home here in Yorkshire to yours, a very warm welcome to the 2021 Society of Authors Awards. Being digital hasn't stopped us from bringing together a wonderful crowd for tonight. On the contrary, I'm going to hand you over to our stars in just a minute. With spring comes a new sense of optimism in this crisis. And for sure, we're all looking forward to seeing more of each other in person over the summer months. But for authors, whose careers are precarious at the best of times, the challenge to sustain themselves is perhaps more acute than ever. That's why we at the Society of Authors are here to support and to champion. And that's why all of us are here tonight to celebrate, on this night of our awards, the phenomenal breadth and depth of books and words as we now find them. Authors at the very beginning of their careers. Authors that are well established. Fiction, non-fiction, poetry, and everything that lies in between. Literature as a treasure at the centre of society. Writing as a force to be reckoned with. Now I could tell you that receiving one of our awards can be transformational for an author. But we thought we'd hand the microphone to those who have received them. Here, courtesy of past winners, is a whistle-stop tour of the Society of Authors Awards. Hello there, my name is Amru al Khadi, um, and last year I was very, very honoured to win a Somerset Morgan Award from the Society of Authors, which has been amazing. Winning the ALCS Tom Gallen Trust Award gave me a huge psychological boost. I hope that this year's winner gets to enjoy the very special feeling that winning a major award like this one bestows. The Gregory really meant a lot to me, uh, just to be recognised amongst uh, the pantheon of, of great poets who have won that prize before. It's not really that often that we see in our industry books for children celebrated for being a little bit out there and I think this is really really good and healthy for our creativity. The journey to become a writer is arduous in itself, you've got to find your voice, you've got to develop your story, write your book, let alone battling to get published. So winning the prize, it makes it all worth it. It was a real honour to win the McCutcherick Prize. It's wonderful to have that recognition, not just for me personally, but for the whole team that published the book. As a result of winning the prize, I felt more pride in my work, confidence in my work and in myself. I won a Chomley Award last year, 2020, from the Society of Authors. Um, it was wonderful recognition, but also humbling to join such a you know, great lineage of um, poets. I was lucky enough to be awarded the Elizabeth Longford Prize in 2007. It's a very, very special prize and a huge honour to receive. Scholarships such as this are more important than ever because if we have learned anything at all over the last few months, it is how utterly interconnected we all are. I'll tell you more about the year we've had at the Society of Authors as we go. For now, there's no time to lose. We have an astonishing £105,775 to give out, 35 authors to reward, and 10 awards to celebrate. Here are the first three. 
The Somerset Maugham Awards offer works of fiction, non-fiction or poetry to enable young writers to gain experience of foreign countries. Four winners are each receiving £4,000. This year's judges were Nadifa Mohammed, Fred Dagoire and Roseanne Watt. Here is past winner Amr al Kadi to share this year's four winners. I am delighted to announce the winners for this year's Somerset Morgan Awards. And they are Lamorna Ash for Dark Salt Clear, Isabella Baffy for Rife, Akeem Balogun for The Storm and Graham Armstrong for The Young Team. Congratulations to all of you for your very well-deserved recognition. I am so, so incredibly grateful to be one of the winners of this year's Somerset Morgan Prize. It just means so much. Um, I think as a young writer, you are constantly uh, uncertain and uh, riddled with doubt about whether or not this is actually a job that you can do. So to receive a prize that is pr as prestigious as a Somerset Morgan Award is just a really special thing. I wanted to thank the judges of the Somerset Morgan Prize. I wanted to thank my agent, Catherine Summerhays, my publisher, Michael Fishwick, and my copy editor, Kate Johnson. I also, as always, want to thank the people of Newlyn uh, for letting me stay in their town for a little while, for letting me interview them and go out on fishing boats and learn about their industry. Uh, it meant so much and the book could not have happened without them. So thank you. Thank you so much to the judges of this year's Somerset Maugham Awards. Um, it is a tremendous honour and I am so thrilled to be able to count myself as a recipient of this award. Uh, one of the things I often seek to do through my poems is to connect with the world in some way. And so I'm just so glad that the judges were able to connect with my poems in some way and that they saw something special in them. Thank you also to the entire team at Ignition Press, to the editorial board for their guidance and support, um, and to my editor Neil, who is always quick to champion me and my work and help me take it further. Uh, thank you also to everyone who has read the pamphlet and a big, big congratulations to all other recipients. To win the Somerset Morn Awards is, in one word, it's reassuring. Just a massive thanks to Brett Hackett, who I've known forever, Nathan Stacey, uh, Jade Yu, Ray Robinson, Jonathan McAloon in particular, who went through the final drafts of the book just everyone at the literary consultancy and of course everyone who's read the work as well because without them, without them enjoying it, without them making me confident in it, we would have never submitted the work to, uh, to the society, a society of authors. And as well as that, uh, winning the award means I'll be able to go to places that I otherwise may have never traveled to and which will, you know, hopefully just give me more experience as a, as a writer so I can just continue to write just more and more great stories. I believe writing Social realism from a place of lived experience carries with it a weight of heavy responsibility. Um, responsibility to represent honestly and boldly your experience and community, but also the a linguistic responsibility to represent voices previously unheard. And I'm very mindful of that and respectful of that. So I will continue to amplify these voices. Thank you very much to the Society of Authors. Thank you very much to Picador. And thank you to my representation, Jonathan Rippon and Joette Pickering. The McKittrick Prize, first awarded in 1990, is given for a first novel by an author over the age of 40. The winner receives £4,000 and the runner-up £1,250. This year's judges were Sabrina Mafus, Nick Rennison and Christopher Taylor. This year's shortlist included Karen Manny for All the Water in the World, Will McLean for The Apparition Phase, Elaine Feeney for As You Were, Deepa Anapara for Gin Patrol on the Purple Line, Sophie Ward for Love and Other Thought Experiments, and Douglas Stewart for Shuggy Bane. Here is past winner Claire Adam. The runner-up is Deepa Anapara for Gin Patrol on the Purple Line. Congratulations, Deepa. I'm pleased to hear that my novel Gin Patrol on the Purple Line has been nominated for the McKittrick Prize. Congratulations to my fellow nominees, my thanks to the judges, the Society of Authors, and everyone else associated with the prize. My thanks also to my editors, my agents, my publishers, and those in marketing and publicity who worked with me on this novel. And the winner is Elaine Feeney for As You Were. Congratulations, Elaine. I'm absolutely delighted to be awarded the McKittrick Prize for my novel, my debut novel, As You Were. 
for 2021. So huge thank you to the judging panel and to the Society of Authors for this lovely boost. Um, it's like it's confirmed signs of life off the west coast of Ireland for me. So that's lovely. Um, thank you so much to my wonderful, fearless editor, Kate Harvey at Harville Secker. I would really like to also thank Mia Quibble-Smith at Vintage and to my lovely agent, Peter Strauss, for being one of the early readers of this novel and also believing in the vision that I had for it. Um, I would like to offer all my congratulations to all the other shortlisted authors of the many prizes that the Society of Authors give out on an annual basis. And I know that they're a huge boost to any writer's career. So thank you so much and um, for running the awards in these difficult times as well. And stay safe and take care. Thank you again. The ALCS Tom Gallant Trust Award for a short story is financed by a bequest made by Miss Nellie Tom Gallon in memory of her brother and generously supported by ALCS. The winner receives £1,000 and the runner-up £575. Judges this year were Claire Fuller, Sophie Haydock, Billy Kahora, Arda Shirvakil and Mary Watson. And on this year's shortlist, Maeve Olin for eventually meeting the sky somewhere. Sean Lusk for The Hopelessness of Hope, Anne Ayler for The House of Wild Beasts, DM O'Connor for I Told You Not to Fly So High, Alison Littlewood for Swan Skin, Daffid Mills Daniel for What the Deal Is. Please welcome past winner Wendy Riley to reveal the winner. The runner up for the 2021 ALCS Tom Gallant Trust Award is Sean Lusk for The Hopelessness of Hope. I'm absolutely thrilled that my story, The Hopelessness of Hope, has been selected as runner-up uh, for this year's Tom Gallon Trust Award. Thank you to uh, the judges, a very, uh, a very impressive set of judges. And so I'm really, really doubly honoured that you should have chosen this story. Um, and congratulations to all of the other shortlisted writers. Thank you to the Society of Authors and to ALCS. And the winner is DM O'Connor for I Told You Not To Fly So High. I'm thrilled, excited, grateful, honoured to be the recipient of the 2021 Tom Gallen Short Story Prize. I'd like to thank the judges. I'd like to thank Nellie Tom Gallen, who created and supports the prize. I'd like to thank the ALCS and I'd like to thank all the other entrants. I'm honored, I'm flabbergasted, I'm very, very thrilled, excited, thank you. Since March last year, our Authors Contingency Fund has given out over 1.4 million pounds in emergency relief to all kinds of writers, illustrators and literary translators affected by the health crisis. We've championed work in Arabic, French, German, Italian, Spanish and Turkish with our translation prizes. And so hugely important to writers at work right now. The Authors Foundation and Kay Blundell Trust have distributed nearly £370,000 in grants to support the works and progress of authors at all stages of their career. We might be at home, but we have not stood still. With all our events online, it's been wonderful to engage with so many of you in new and exciting ways. Since April 2020, the SOA at Home Festival has featured panel discussions, development workshops and Feel Good Friday events for members, all from the comfort of home. And a great many authors have invited us into their homes and creative spaces for afternoon tea. Inua Ellums, Sarah Waters, Roger Robinson, Philip Pullman, Neil Gaiman, Dorothy Coomson, Dean Atta, Margaret Atwood, Ian Rankin, Amru El Khadi, Vaseem Khan, Barney Norris. I could go on and on. Over the last year, our local groups have now grown to cover a third of SOA membership, with 14 new local groups set up across England, Wales, Scotland and Germany. Now time for more awards. Here are the next four. 
The Chumley Awards for Poets were founded by the late Dowager Marchioness of Chumley in 1966. They recognise the achievement and distinction of individual poets. Five winners are each receiving £1,680. This year's judges were Manitza Alvey, Drew Milne, Grace Nichols and Darren Reese jones Here is past winner Hannah Lowe to tell you who this year's five are. I'm delighted to announce the Tomney Awards for Poets. Um, this year, going to five wonderful poets, Paula Clare, Kai Miller, Katrina Porteous, Maurice Rawdon and Susan Wicks. Heartfelt congratulations to everyone. Thank you, judges, for giving me an award for the body of my work. And actually, this week, I celebrate 60 years of creating poetry. With your accolade, you will give me opportunities to help people understand poetry in all its forms. The Chumley Award, I am so deeply honoured and humbled by, and that it is given by the Society of Authors. It's just a wonderful reminder that we belong to so many societies and so many countries. So my deepest, deepest thanks for this and warmest congratulations to the other awardees. I'd like to say a huge thank you to the Society of Authors, to the judges and to the estate of the late Marchioness of Chumley for this award. There are so many people to whom I owe so much. My teachers, all the people I've worked with, this place, the fishermen here, my mother and father, all my publishers, especially Bloodaxe Books. Thank you all. I'd also like to thank readers because a poem is nothing without readers or listeners. So thank you for being with me. I'm very grateful myself for Chumbly this year. I'm honoured. It's a shame we can't all celebrate together in person on this occasion, but I hope everyone is having a fantastic festive evening, even so. I'd like to thank the Society of Authors and this year's judging panel for giving me this award. I was very surprised. When the email popped up in my inbox, it never occurred to me that I could actually be one of the recipients. The out of the blue nature of the award has made me more aware of that than ever. Thank you again. The Eric Gregory Awards for a collection by poets under the age of 30 were founded in 1960 by the late Dr Eric Gregory for the encouragement of young poets. Seven winners are each receiving £4,050. This year's judges were Varney Capildeo, Sarah Howe, Andrew McMillan, Jamie McKendrick and Roger Robinson. Past winner Sean Hewitt joins us to announce them. I'm really delighted to be able to announce the winners of the Eric Gregory Awards 2021, who are Michael Askew for The Association Game, Dominic Hand for Symbiont, Cynthia Miller for Honorifics, Boyega Odubanjo for Empty Uncle Poems, Candace Siobhan Walker for Cowboy, Phoebe Walker for Animal Noises, and Mylena Williamson for The Red Trapeze. A huge congratulations to all of the winners. I'm thrilled to be one of this year's Eric Gregory Award winners for my collection, The Association Game. And my deepest thanks to the Society of Authors and to the judges for choosing me. It's a real thrill and an honour, and I don't think it's quite sunk in yet. I'd also like to offer a big congratulations to the other winners. Thank you so much to the judges and the Society of Authors for selecting honorifics as one of the Eric Gregory Awards this year. I'm just so thrilled and grateful. And a big thank you, of course, to Jane Kamane, my editor at Nine Arches Press, for believing in this book and believing in my writing all of these years. I want to thank my family, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins, my parents, my siblings, 
family by blood, chosen family, so my mates. Um, want to thank London, specifically East London, specifically Dagenham, specifically Hackney. want to thank the idea of Nigeria that I've had in my head for a long time and all the people that have helped strengthen the idea. By the time this comes out, I'll have gone to Nigeria and come back for the first time in more than 20 years. Shout out to the poetry business. Shout out to all the people that have shown me love and support throughout my life and throughout my writing. I am absolutely over the moon to be among this year's Eric Gregory Award winners. It's really heartening to have my work recognised in this way and it's the perfect way to kick off Hot Girl Summer. I'm really thankful to everyone who supported my writing, especially my mum and my poetry pals. I want to say a big thank you to the judges and congratulations to the other winners. I'm really looking forward to hearing and reading your collections. I'm really delighted to have been chosen in this year's Eric Gregory Awards. Thank you so much to the Society of Authors, to all of the judges, and of course to my publisher, Green Bottle Press. Thank you, Jennifer, for seeing something in my strange small book, Animal Noises, uh, and bringing it into the real world. It means a huge amount to have those poems out there. Uh, congratulations to all of the other winners, and thank you again. I feel very proud and grateful to have won an Eric Gregory Award this year. Um, writing poetry can often be very solitary, so it means a lot that the judges read and enjoyed my writing. So a big thank you to um, my family, friends and partner, as well as all the lecturers at the Seamus Heaney Centre at Queen's University Belfast. The Elizabeth Longford Prize for Historical Biography sponsored by Flora Fraser and Peter Soros, was established in 2003 in affectionate memory of Elizabeth Longford, the acclaimed biographer. The winner will receive £5,000. This year's judges were Richard Davenport Hines, Professor Roy Foster, who was chair of the judges, Lady Antonia Fraser, Flora Fraser, and Professor Rana Mitter. On this year's shortlist were Sutia Hazarasig, Black Spartacus, Sarah Lefanu for Something of Themselves, Frederick Logeval for JFK Volume 1, Samanth Subranamium for A Dominant Character. Past winner Jesse Childs can give us the winner. It is my great pleasure to say that this year's winner is Frederick Logeval for his brilliant JFK Volume 1. Congratulations, Frederick. I'm so honoured to be the recipient of this year's Elizabeth Longford Prize for Historical Biography. What a thrill it was to get the news. I want to thank, first and foremost, the selection committee, thank my editors, Andy Ward and Marie Pantoyan in uh, New York, Daniel Crew in London, my agent, Warren Fraser, my family. All of them have been so supportive, so enthusiastic from the start of this project, and it has meant the world. I'm grateful also to the reviewers uh, of the book, and I guess most of all to the readers, to the folks who decided that a, a new take uh, on the life and times of this iconic political figure was worth their time. Paul Torday published his first novel, Salmon Fishing in the Yemen, aged 60. The family decided to set up this prize of £1,000 in his honour, celebrating first novels by authors aged 60 or over. This year's judges were Paul Bailey, Rupa Faruqi and Anne Youngson. This year's shortlist was Judas Amanthus for Dirk Lean, Elfin Jones for Let Sleeping Dogs Lie, Kathy O'Shaughnessy for In Love with George Eliot, Karen Rainey for All the Water in the World, Trevor Wood for The Man on the Street. Here is past winner and 2020 judge Anne Youngson. The runner-up is Karen Rainey for All the Water in the World. Congratulations, Karen. I'm thrilled to be runner-up for the Paul Torday Prize this year. And I want to thank the judges for choosing my novel 
and the Society of Authors for the wonderful work they do in supporting writers at all stages in their careers. I'm hugely grateful to my agent, Claire Alexander, and my publisher, Lisa Hyten, and everyone at John Murray and Two Roads. And the winner is Cathy O'Shaughnessy for In Love with George Eliot. Congratulations, Cathy. I just want to say I'm so thrilled and honoured to be this year's winner of the Paul Tordain Memorial Prize. Um, and I'd just like to thank a few people. Scribe, my publishers, Philip Gwynne Jones, Molly Slight, Adam Howard, and Rebecca Carter, my agent. Once again, I'm super honoured and thank you so much. Our lineup of awards is already expansive. We can just about manage to get them all into one evening. But if we see an opportunity to help authors in new ways, we will always go for it. And so tonight, we're delighted to announce a new addition to the programme. A £2,000 prize for a novel focusing on the experience of travel away from home. Inspired by Malcolm Lowry's novel Under the Volcano and endowed by his biographer Gordon Bowker. Introducing the Volcano Prize. To find out more, Paula Johnson, our Head of Prizes and Awards, had a chat with Ramdai Bowker, wife of the late Gordon Bowker, the sponsor of this prize. The Society of Authors Awards together bring focus and have a special impact on particular areas of writing. In 2019, we awarded the first Paul Torday Memorial Prize for debut novels for writers of 60 and over. And last year came the Queen's Knickers Award for an outstanding, not to say quirky, original illustrated children's book. So it's a very happy moment now to welcome a newcomer to the mix, launching today the Volcano Prize for a novel with a setting away from the writer's home in celebration of the writer Malcolm Lowry and founded by his biographer, the late Gordon Bowker. His widow, Ramdi Bowker, has gone on generously to endow this wonderful new award and here she is to tell us about the inspiration behind the prize and a husband's relish for Larry's work. Gordon always wanted to somehow fund an award and leave a prize for a writer. He always thought of prizes as providing extra encouragement, so prestigious for a writer to win. On your journey to becoming a writer, you always have ups and downs. He always saw a prize as being a wonderful pickup for a writer on this journey. Larry was the writer that interested him most. In 1962, when he was in his 20s, he first came across Larry's poem. And the voice was distinctive and spoke directly to him. He then read everything Larry wrote, borrowing them from the library. And when he was on holiday, he read Under the Volcano, and it just made him feel he had to become a writer. He wrote Malcolm Lowry in 1985. I was with him on the, his research to Lowry's birthplace in Caldy and to visiting Lowry friends in Wirral. Gordon was a great researcher. He wanted to walk in every one of Lowry's footsteps. I was his sounding board. We sat at the kitchen table and that's where all the writing and deep discussion happened. He never lost sight of his aim to help other writers. The prize will be open for entry this September, and I hope you will all join us this time next year to meet the first winner. Thank you very much, Ram and Paula. The Volcano Prize opens for entry in August. Now, without further ado, here are the final three awards for tonight. Generously funded by Nicholas Allen, author of The Queen's Knickers, this award is for an outstandingly original children's illustrated book for ages 0 to 7. The winner will receive £5,000 as well as a golden Queen's Knickers badge, as depicted in Nicholas Allen's original book. And the runner-up will receive £1,000 and a silvered badge. This year's judges were Alexis Deacon, Patrice Lawrence and Tony Ross. This year's shortlist was John Condon and Matt Hunt for The Pirates Are Coming. Joy Cowley and Giselle Clarkson for the Gobbledygook book. Katie Danes and Marie-Yves Tremblay for Lift the Flap Questions and Answers About Plastic. Kes Gray and Fred Blunt for The Diddle That Dumbed. 
Rashmi Saradesh Pandey and Diane Ewan for Never Show a T-Rex a Book, Alex T. Smith for Mr. Penguin and the Catastrophic Cruise. Who will be getting a badge this year? Inaugural winner, Elena Aravalo Melville, is with us to reveal all. The runner-up is Alex T. Smith for Mr. Penguin and the Catastrophic Cruise. Congratulations, Alex. Thank you so much for awarding me the runner-up prize in the Queen's Knickers Award for my book, Mr. Penguin and the Catastrophic Cruise. I'm so thrilled and delighted to win this award, um, partially because it's completely bonkers. I'm absolutely thrilled to receive it. And I want to just say again, thank you so much. The winner of the Queen's Knickers 2021 is, or rather, are, Rash Mission Deshpande and Diane Ewan for Never Show a T-Rex a Book. Yay! Well done. Congratulations to both of you. I'm so pleased, so happy in fact, that our book has won the Queen's Dickers Awards for 2021. I'd like to thank Nicholas Allen for creating the award. I'd like to thank the judges for selecting our book. I'd like to thank Puffin for being behind us in this project and I'd also and most importantly would like to thank every person that picked up the book, everyone that's bought it and everyone who has loved it. So I just wanted to say thank you to the judges for choosing it, thank you to everyone who has supported, loved and shouted about this book and to everyone who has helped this book find its way into the hands of a child. Thank you so much. And of course, a big thank you to Puffin for always believing in us and believing in this little book. Thank you so much. The travelling scholarships were established during the Second World War in 1944 to enable creative writers to keep in touch with fellow writers abroad. The five winners this year will each receive £1,600. Judges were Tamima Anam, Ida Idamariam, Anne McElvoy, Adam O'Riordan and Gary Young. Please welcome Ida Ada Mariam from this year's judging panel to reveal the winners. This year's travelling scholarships are awarded to Guy Gunaratne, Lola Okolosi, Claire Pollard, Yara Rodriguez Fowler, Tom Stevenson. Congratulations to all five writers. I'm so very honoured and humbled to be a recipient of one of the 2021 Travelling Scholarships. It was unexpected and I'm really truly appreciative. Uh, so thank you to the Society of Authors and the panel for giving me this honour. I'm truly grateful. This award is such a welcome surprise. Uh, thank you to the Society of Authors for your generosity. Um, it's arrived at uh, the perfect time as we are coming out of travel restrictions and um, my novel is set between the UK and Nigeria. I'll be using the scholarship to uh, return there so I can be immersed in the language, the colours, the sounds, the taste, just the richness of Lagos, which I consider to be uh, my second home. Thank you so much. Just to say I'm extremely honoured to have been chosen for a travelling scholarship this year. It's just so nice to think my name came up in the room when people were judging um, and it's a total surprise. And it's such a great gift for a writer, the gift of travel. So huge thanks to the panel and to the Society of Authors for everything you've done in this last year uh, to keep writers looking forward. Thank you. What does a travelling scholarship mean to me? Um, well, free money is basically the best thing that any artist can get, particularly where there are minimal strings attached. We don't live in a world where um, most of us are given the conditions to make art. So that's what it means to me, the conditions to make art. And secondly, the fact it's a traveling scholarship means that I can go to Brazil, which is where a lot of my work is set, um, and continue working across borders and also to dismantle them. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Society of Authors and to the nominators for this award. Long-form reporting requires support of this kind for its existence. To receive it unexpectedly feels rather like falling off a bridge only to land in a comfortable armchair. 
So thank you very much indeed. Betty Trask left a bequest to the Society of Authors in 1983 to fund prizes for first novels written by authors under the age of 35 in a traditional or romantic, but not experimental, style. There are five award winners this year, each receiving £3,240 and one prize winner receiving £10,000. This year's judges were Zara Collins, Eleanor Dymot and Vaseem Khan. For the final announcement of the night, please welcome past winner James Clark. The five awards go to Graham Armstrong for the Young Team, Mame Blue for Bad Love, Noma Ike and Joku for the Waterhouse, Kieran Millwood Hargrave for the Mercies, Ellie Williams for the Liars Dictionary. Congratulations to all the writers. I am so lucky to be here um, and I am very, very grateful to the Society Offers for this recognition and to Picador for their belief in the young team and also to my representation, Joette Pickering and Jonathan Rippon, um, who worked tirelessly on this project. And uh, I hope it speaks volumes to young men and women in my community about the distinct possibility of their impossible. Thank you very much. I am absolutely ecstatic to have been chosen as one of the Betty Trask Award winners for this year. I'm a bit flabbergasted by it, but it's such an incredible honour. I just want to say thank you to the Betty Trask Awards team. Thank you to the Society of Authors for all the support they've given me as a debut author. Thank you so much to Jacaranda Books for taking a chance on Bad Love and putting it out into the world. Um, and thank you so much to all the readers, all the reviewers, all the people who've said lovely things about the book and everybody yet to read it. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm incredibly honoured and incredibly grateful to have received a Betty Trask Award this year for my novel manuscripts, The Water House. Uh, I'm thankful to the Society of Authors, to the Betty Trask Award Foundation, and to this year's judges for choosing The Water House as an award recipient. Uh, winning this means so much to me. Um, I wanted to thank my sister, Ozichi Kenjoku, who has read through drafts of this novel and offered uh, helpful suggestions. Uh, I wanted to thank my dad as well, um, who has uh, also read through drafts of this. Um, the rest of my family really for uh, making writing uh, so much uh, easier and always being so supportive. Uh, I wanted to thank Adashi uh, Odama, uh, everyone who's read this work in workshops, uh, friends, everyone who's offered helpful suggestions. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Helena Veramontes, uh, Stephanie Vaughn as well, uh, Bob Morgan as well, who were always so supportive throughout the writing process. And I couldn't have done this uh, without um, any of these people who, who have just, you know, made the writing process so easy uh, and have been so, so, so supportive. I'm so amazed and delighted and slightly dazed to receive a Betty Trask Award. Thank you to my agent, Heli Ogden, who really held my hand and held my heart as well when I was writing this book. Thank you to my editors, Sophie Jonathan and Judy Klein at Picador and Little Brown for shaping this story into the best possible version of itself. And of course, most of all, thank you to every reader who decided in this year of being inside to pick up a book about a tiny Arctic Circle island in Norway. I'm completely honoured to be near a list of this calibre, <laughs> let alone considered for a Betty Trask Award. Thank you so much to the judges um, and to the Society of Authors for considering the Liar's Dictionary. Thank you also to my agent Lucy Luck and to my editor at William Heinemann, Jason Arthur, for pushing the novel um, over the line and getting it pushed in the directions that it needed to be pushed. Um, I'm sincerely grateful. Thank you so much. And the Betty Trask Prize, together with £10,000, is this year awarded to Thomas McMullen for The Last Good Man. Congratulations, Tom. Well done. I just want to say what an honour um, to be awarded the Betty Trask Prize this year. Um, it means a great deal to me. Uh, it's been such a strange time to put out a novel, um, which makes it all, all the more meaningful to get this, this prize. Um, I just want to thank everyone um, at the Society of Authors, everyone who has supported the book in one way or another. Um, it, it means a great deal. So thank you. 
And that concludes tonight's ceremony. Many thanks to our sponsors, the Authors Licensing and Collecting Society for their support of the ALCS Tom Gallon Trust Award, as well as today's activities, to the Torday family for funding the Paul Torday Memorial Prize, and to Nicholas Allen for his support of the Queen's Knickers Award. And our thanks to you for joining us. And of course, there's no better way to support authors than to read them. So I urge you all to pick up tonight's winners from your local bookshop and discover their worlds. You can find all the books listed on our website. It's been a pleasure being with you virtually today. Remember that whatever your place in your author's journey, you are making a difference to the world, changing it one word at a time. Thank you.